Oh, you want to, too full is, a little flatter is always better than too full, okay? You, can, you can't draw it back. Be, because, yes, exactly, because, you know, if you spill over, then you spilled over, the water's there. So you'd rather just walk the line. So you, you have to, that's why you have to stand in front of the mirror, and you can't go by scale, all that stuff. You have to look in the mirror and say, okay, how's my body changing? Am I starting to retain water? Conditioning is the main thing. If you cut your salt and your diet is, your body fat's low enough, and you don't over-carb yourself, I, honestly, I'm not a huge carber, you guys. I don't, eat, I don't eat crazy carbs the last couple days. What I try to do is I deplete a little bit. Not crazy, I don't go to zero carbs. I, like I mentioned, of my low day is 400, so I might go down to 400, and then I go up to maybe 600 the last couple days and carb up a little bit, but I don't go crazy. You shouldn't go from zero to three to 400 carbohydrates. You know, that's, I think it's better. If you look good leading into the show, don't change anything. You just gotta cut your water a little bit, cut the salt down, and boom, you're ready to go. You know, if you, how many guys, like say, oh, I look so much better like the day after or two, two days before and then they get on stage. That has to do with a lot of nerves too. There's been a, a bunch of shows that I look better prior or the day after. You know, everyone thinks they eat a pizza the next day, they look phenomenal, you know, but you're looking in your hotel room or your house, I mean, you're not looking at yourself on stage under the lights with oil on and all that stuff. So you just gotta, you gotta, it's better to be less than too much. And that's going to come down to your diet and how much, you know, I can't sit here and say, okay, eat this much carbohydrates, this much protein, but don't go, I always tell everyone, just don't go create, like the day before, say, okay, I'm to the show and I'm going to eat pancakes and cookies and pizza and all this shit. Stay with what you what got you to the point. You know, if you've eaten fish or eaten steak, I like to eat steak a little bit towards the end just to stay a little fuller, but I don't go out and eat like burgers and fries and all that stuff. Okay, that's after the show. You know, if you're really, like, depleted or whatever. Or, but just remember, you can't drink a lot of fluids. That's super, super important. You know, the fluid has to be very low. I've had a bad experience cutting salt. Um, just what? flattened out really bad. Couldn't couldn't get full no matter what. Um, so I was surprised that you did that because most of the guys that I deal with don't cut salt. But you remember, a lot of... A lot of, I add a lot of salt to my, so I use a lot, a lot of sea salt. I do too, yeah. So I don't use condom and stuff like that. So you got, you can't just, same thing with the water. I mentioned about cutting the water. So you're cutting you, it to like a normal you gotta, you, Yeah, you've got to cut it down. And remember, a lot of foods have natural sodium. And even the egg whites, egg whites like, yeah. I'll cut out the egg whites leading yeah. up to the show one week out because there's a lot of natural salt. So you're not eating like zero sodium or anything? Not like zero sodium. I mean, you're still getting some from the foods that you eat. Obviously, I eat pounds of meat. You know, I mean, you're going to get that. Yeah. You're going to get natural sodium from that. Okay. How, how many sets are you doing now, or do you typically do? do I do 20 sets per body part. 20 sets. Which and is I, a lot. Yeah. Now you, are you going up, I spend, and back down? I or? rest 45 seconds between each set, which is very fast. But I don't have to do, I do no cardiovascular training off season. I do no stairs, no treadmill, nothing. So I, I get up to, you know, I'm 285 now, so what I try to do is just uh, take less rest between each set, and uh, I do high volume. Okay. Do you go up in weight and come back down? I go up in weight and I don't come back down. Come I go, back. I pyramid up, but a lot of times I'll go right into a weight. Like after the, the first exercise, I'll do a couple warm-up sets, but after that I'm rolling, I just go right into three sets each exercise. So I'll pick, you know, six, six or six movements usually, six or seven movements to hit different angles on a body part. I feel that, you know, body parts are made to be hit at angles. I mean, we talk about doing chest, incline, flat bench, you know, cables, uh, flies, all that stuff, pullovers. I mean, you've got to hit it from so many different angles, and you know, there's so many gyms equipped with great equipment. I mean, you don't necessarily just have to stick with the free weight with movements now. There's a lot of machines you can actually use that can benefit a lot of people. We talk about the injuries that's, you know, hammer strength or machines, you know, sometimes can, can benefit someone like that instead of doing the free weights. You said 20 sets. How many different exercises, though? About six to seven different exercises. So three sets each. Which is a lot, you know. I suggest twelve to twelve to, you know, twelve to twenty. At least twelve. If you're going to do chest, I would say you know pick three or four exercises, three sets each. Uh, you know, twelve sets total. Don't include your warm ups in that. Okay, so you know a lot of times you start off you do three or four warm up sets. Just be smart. When you're doing back, do you do a row day and like a pull down I day? Do, I do that, obviously, advanced in my routine, yes, because uh, I needed that. My back was a weak point. Uh, 
Pull-ups is gonna be your best exercise for back. You guys don't wanna build a big back, pull-ups is gonna be the number one exercise. I don't care what anyone says. That's gonna give you your V taper. May not give you the, the super thickness from front to back. Like, this is where I win shows because I'm so, I have so much depth. You'll see a lot of guys, they turn to the side, they disappear. With me, I'm really thick front to back. So, a lot of that's done through the rows and uh, dumbbell rows, T-bar rows, deadlifts, that kind of stuff. That's gonna build your front to back thickness. But your pull-ups is going to be, you have to do pull-ups in your routine. That's going to give you those wings. I mean, that's how I started wide off. Grip, right? Yeah, wide grip. And you can do close grip stuff too, but wide grip pull-ups are going to be your number one back builder. Okay? You see these guys in jail or whatever, they got the huge backs, you know, they do pull-ups all day long. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, your triceps. The dip is going to be probably the most beneficial exercise. Look at these guys in the Olympics that work on the rings. They get the huge cap triceps. Anytime your triceps in a locked position, you're doing exercise, that's going to give you that nice cap to the tricep. So I like to do a lot of dips. Okay. People say legs, squats, but I don't necessarily think that's true. There's so many different variations of machines. Um, I do like to do front squats because that puts more stress in the front. How often do you work your core? How many times? I do. I train abs almost every day. Um, even now, I'm starting to train it because what's going to happen is, uh, for me, for the Olympia, like you know, I want to have a smaller waist, and when you have control of your abs, it's a lot easier to bring your waist in. So usually, leading up to a contest, I train it every day that I'm in the gym. I do abs, and I only train five days a week. So I'll train like three or four days in a row, then I'll take a day or two off, and then I'll get back in it. But it's five total days. It's out of seven days I train. What's the maximum amount of time that you spend in the gym? In one session, right? I've spent two hours. I mean, if I do legs, you know, quads, hamstrings, I mean, I, 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 I kill it pretty good. So I'm in there almost an hour, hour and 40 minutes probably, depending if you're, if you're training with someone, it, it takes more time. I used to train with three people. If I'm training by myself, 45 minutes, I'm in the gym. That's it. I mean, with, with the rest time I have, I'm boom, in and out. I mean, remember, it's just about stimulation, getting in there, pump the muscle up, and get out and feed it. Feeding it is more important than, oh, I tell everyone, I, people laugh, but I say, my eating is more important than my training right now. Because if I don't eat, I shouldn't even bother going to the gym. My body functions on a lot of food. Have you ever dealt with like emotional eating or binging or any tips? Yeah, I have, some, I have some severe eating disorders. Because I dieted so hard, I used to diet on 50 carbohydrates for a show early in my career. And uh, it killed me. Um, I remember eating food after a show. I would actually... Uh, I would actually, you know, pick, okay, I'm going to eat this. And then I would say, I want this too. So I remember buying burgers, pizza, candy, ice cream. I would lay it all on the table. And I would say, okay, what am I going to eat first? And I would start eating, starting, you know, you get so sick. I'm like, oh, my God, i got to go lay down. You know, your head's like, you're sweating like crazy from all the sugar and everything. I lay down in bed. I'm like, I'm never going to do this again. Then 15 <laughs> minutes later, I wake up, and I'm like, oh, the food's still out there, you know. <laughs> so I start eating more, but... You have to control, that's why I said, like, having a controlled diet year-round, you know, allowing yourself to, you know, to eat, uh, not on a crazy off-season program, you know, with crap foods, eating better, that's going to help you, your mind a lot. Yeah. It's all in your mind. It's not, you think it's your body, but it's your mind. Yeah. And, you know, the strong minds is going to be the ones that become the best bodybuilders. Right. You know, stay on the diets. You can't cheat on your diet. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, once, once a week, maybe, you can have a cheat meal. But when I diet for a competition, I don't cheat whatsoever. I stay on a strict diet. Okay, you got you got you know 12 to 16 weeks to get in shape and reach a goal. I mean, come on, you, you get it, you can do it in that amount of time. Would you recommend cheating. more cheats for someone who is an ectomorph? I, I, you know, you have to you have to take in more calories, and if you can't get the, the food calories and quality foods, I mean, yes, you, it's better to eat something than not eat something at all. So, you know, I, I, even me, I stay pretty lean, so I tend to eat like a burger here and there. And if I miss meals, I mean, I won't be afraid to eat like something more calorie dense, you know, like a burger. But I don't go, I don't eat like pizza and that kind of stuff. Or, you know, I try to eat something that's kind of heavy, like that's going to help me gain weight. That's all I think about is gaining weight. Okay. Any other questions? What are your calories looking like right now? Four to 6,000 calories. And I say hey, that's a broad range, but that's to be honest because I travel a lot, so it's hard sometimes to get in enough. But between four to six thousand, and that's all food mostly. You know, I try to take in you know between six and eight hundred a meal almost. That's that would be the goal. 
uh, do you mostly like how like shakes, protein shakes? I don't. I don't you usually do prefer protein shakes yeah. after I train. That's mostly it. I use um uh, like a silk aminos, a branch mm -hmm. chains. I use after I train. Um, I use a creatine. Uh, right now, I use sometimes I do pre workout, you know, something for uh, like a glycerol base to get some fullness. Uh, fat burner for when I train for a show, I'll use what, a fat burner. What about uh, at night? Do you wake up in the middle of the I night? I wake up and I usually eat, I mean, I don't usually have a shake. I'll have like a, a meal? Yeah, prepared. Yeah. I try to prepare my food ahead of time. I carry food with me a lot. And, um, that's the thing, is too, is when you go somewhere training for the show, man, you've got to bring your food with you, Tupperware, you know. I know it sucks eating it cold. I mean, I'm on the plane eating sometimes. It's terrible, you know? You may, you may have already answered this. Um, what's your favorite style of dieting, like, in, and why? Like, say, carb cycle to keto or isofluoride? Uh, you know, I do, like, what I usually do is I'll, I'll start off with a base diet, and I'll say, okay, I'm going to eat this many carbohydrates, this much protein. But if I need to get leaner, what I'll do is I'll drop down my carbohydrates for two or three days. Um, and keep the protein higher and then like on the third or fourth day I'll bump up the carbohydrates like sky high but drop the protein down so I talked about like the calorie you know four calories per gram of protein carbohydrates it's both the same so what I try to do is if I create a deficit in protein you know it will go up in carbohydrates so the calories even off but it's just from the different source so you know when I carb up obviously I'm trying to get fuller um, you know, I'm still taking the same amount of calories, it's just coming from more carbohydrates than protein. But the protein has to come down. You can't eat 500 grams of protein and eat, you know, 400 grams of carbohydrates and then, you know, bump the carbohydrates up to the eight or 900 and keep the protein at 500. It's just, it's too much. Your body, your body won't assimilate that right and you'll continue to store body fat. It's about tricking it off without losing muscle mass. That's the main goal. You want to keep as much. That's bullshit. People say, oh, you're going to lose muscle on your diet for a show. That's bullshit. You're going to, you're going to maintain it if you eat quality food. How closely do you watch your, like, your fat? I don't really watch as much fat. Like, I only have a couple whole eggs in the morning, and obviously I'm eating a lot of chicken and steak and that kind of stuff, so you're getting a lot of extra fat that way. But like I said, I diet on fish, so I mean, there's not. I try to create less fat in my diet because I'm trying to get as lean as possible, and I just think that the body functions better, and people may tend to differ. I mean, there's so many diets out there, you read of different pros. Uh, you know, it's, you, some people like fats instead of carbohydrates because they retain too much water or, or store body fat. I'm a huge advocate of carbohydrates and protein strictly. So I don't really, I eat so much carbohydrates, I really don't need to add the fat in there. It's carbs at night completely out? No, if you train at night, you gotta eat carbs. So this thing at five o'clock, go oh, cut your carbohydrates after five. That's bullshit. You got If I train at night, I train at midnight. I train at one in the morning last night. So I was driving around last night looking for food. You know, I ordered rice and ate at three o'clock in the morning. You know, uh, carbohydrates. So like, what if you're just starving at night? What do you like? Just I would, or you're like doing cardio too. That three if times you're starving, if you're not, if you just can't eat, if you eat just protein, or you can have. Like I use almond butter or whatever. If I'm totally, if my metabolism is racing out of control, I'll add like almond butter or uh, add avocado to my meals to help stunt it a little bit. But protein, you gotta, you know, if you if you have seven meal a day diet and you're absolutely starving, you wake up and you can't go back to sleep. You're better off eating a little protein, you know. So cooks, you know, some fish or chicken or whatever else than than just saying, okay, I'm starving, I'm going back to bed, you know. Because it's really hard to sleep. I mean, especially as the last few weeks. But you can't overeat. That's the thing. You just don't want to eat so much that you, you can't burn body fat. Do you ever like you, know, you eat your ordinary meals? But do you ever get to a meal at a certain point in the day where you almost not that you're not hungry, but your metabolism and your stomach's not it up? I'm never hungry much. I'm hungry for about three meals out of the seven that I eat a day. So I force feed all my meals pretty much. And I I'm not lying. It takes me almost an hour to eat a meal. When I'm dieting for a show, it takes me one, I'll sit in front of a plate for almost one hour, so seven hours a day it takes me to eat my meals. That's how, it's changed. I mean, as my age, I, I think it's easier for me to get leaner, but my appetite definitely is changed. I'm not as hungry as I was. And I don't know, I'll train double splits, like back in Vegas, I've been training twice a day now, and that's boosting my metabolism so I can actually eat more. And that's when, when I do cardiovascular for a show, it's not necessarily... When you do your cardio, you're not saying, okay, I want to burn X amount of calories because I'm going to, you know, burn fat right now. It's about boosting the metabolism so you continue to burn fat. So what I'll do is when I train for a show, it help doing cardio twice a day, it actually, it stimulates my metabolism more than actually I'm worried about burning body fat because I know I'm going to get lean enough. 
because I'll just you know drop the calories down enough with the training that's going to do it along with the intensity of training but you know for for doing cardio it's going to help with assimilate all that food so you can actually eat more so you can get bigger would you recommend I know you don't do cardio in the off season but for someone if you're a hard gainer no you should you I mean you, you asked me that question so I figure you know you're a hard gainer absolutely not no I, I didn't do it early in my career either I did barely any cardio even training for shows I I mean, I, I got second in the 2001 Olympia. I did no cardio for that show at all. None. I trained twice a day, and I did sauna, you know, to, to keep create body heat, and I was lean enough to get second, you know. So body heat, I mean, uh, the sauna. It's good. It, it helps with lactic acid, all that stuff. I mean, all that stuff, massage therapy, all that stuff helps. You know, create, you know, create a lifestyle. That's the main thing is, you know, you want to do as much as you can. I mean, obviously, the massages cost money, but the saunas are good. I mean... Helps push stuff out, you know, toxins, all that stuff. What kind of fish do you eat? I eat uh, tilapia. Tilapia. How are you cooking it? Boiling it? Or? I cook it outside on a foreman on a, grill, on, six sticks. On yeah. a foreman grill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a food sponsor that sends me all that stuff now. Eat to grow it. You can order online. Some of you guys probably seen that. So luckily now, I mean, that's I used to spend a fortune on the food. I, they send me fillets and chicken, all that stuff now. So I get tilapia. I used orange roughy too. Up here it's different. It's caught. See, in, in like West we Coast, tilapia. yeah, West Coast is different. I mean, we get different fish out there, but tilapia is what most of them, if you ask any of these girls, they probably eat tilapia. Any white fish. White fish is the best mm -hmm. for leaning down. Obviously, salmon has a little more fat. Some people put that in there. They need more calories, but white fish is going to be the best advantage. Well, there's a myth, kind of a myth going around. I don't know if it's true or not. If you do squats, same day you do your arms, is there something that releases in your body to make your arms bigger? I mean, you can't just not do legs, you know what I mean? No, it's, I know, but do It's going to increase all your, your levels. I mean, you, I don't know, you may know this, you're a writer. You, I'm, not, hmm. I'm not a scientist on this stuff, but uh, for me, I mean, I've always done, I mean, why would you not train your leg? No, I don't think train, you know, squatting no, not, or whatever. Yeah, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying the same day. You, you can't squat there. every, you can't squat on I wouldn't do it on our day. On your day. I never did that. Are you saying that there's testosterone or something that relates to your body? Yeah, sure. Hormone. It helps with your IGF-1 levels and all that stuff. But any training is going to do that. Yeah. I just, I was just curious. Yeah. I heard it. Before. Yeah. So six weeks out, you should definitely be posing. Six weeks yeah. out, start your posing for sure. I, I wouldn't. You know, you can do it at 12, 16 weeks, but six weeks down, yes, and that is going to condition you for sure. It's going to help the condition. When yes. I first started, I was sweating. Because you'll sweat your ass off. Yeah. I mean, it's, you've got to practice, man. And you, you put the mirrors there. You have some of them. You, <coughs> you do the videos, follow. pictures. Whatever you can fit in. After the training is good, sometimes, you know, you're full and, you, you know, you're, you look better after you train. So if you can get in there, I mean, even 10 minutes. Go through those poses. Like I said, 10 seconds. Shh. Hold 10 seconds. Shh. You know, front door bicep. Shh. 10 seconds, you know. I look Squeeze. good in the mirror, and then I have someone take pictures, and I look horrible. Well, I mean, yeah. the, just, you know, the camera's probably shit. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, that's the thing. You Listen, yeah. I mean, but that's, I'm gonna try, that's I heard why. Someone it's, else said that thing about closing your eyes. I heard but that's why saying. it's good to have, you know, you think you look great. But maybe you, I don't. you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not so much. And you know how many times I thought I looked great, and then I'll tell Steve, hey, you know, he'll say, hey, send me a couple pictures, and he says, you look like shit. Uh. <laughs> I'll call him for a show. I mean, I won shows, and he'll be like, I'm like, oh, did I look good? He's like, yeah, you looked okay. You need to be harder. I said, I won the show. He says, yeah, it doesn't matter. You still need to be harder, you know. That's the good thing about him, you know, and he's, he's promoting these shows here with me. And he's on the judging panel a lot, so he'll tell you straight out. But don't go to Steve and say, you know what, you screwed me and whatever, because you might get sidelined. You know, <laughs> that's Ron. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to piss him. You don't want to cross Steve. <laughs> um, but you know, that's the thing is, you know, I, anyone competing at our shows here, um, if Steve's present, he's the one to ask. Uh, you know, what can I do better? And he's going to be, be prepared for a blunt co comment. You know. If you didn't look good, or you you know you you need to improve, or he's going to tell you, you look great. I mean, it's, he will tell you. I mean, that's what I did. My last show was was your last show. Yeah. Is uh, I emailed all the judges mm -hmm. and get all their feedback to see you know what they saw. Yeah. And 
what I should change. But if you can catch them the day of the show, the show is over. I, I suggest that always because they're they're fresh in their mind. Right. You know, sometimes right. they forget. Like they look at hundreds of competitors. You know what I mean? So it, it's very difficult for them to say, "Okay, I remember you." I mean, unless you stand out, unless you got some crazy haircut like mine or whatever. You know. <laughs> or no hair? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but everyone has no hair now. I'm the only pro with hair now. So coming into a show. I think I've done six or seven shows, and I always have stubborn areas that after the show, they're not there. And at the same body weight, I'll look way better. What's that about? So it's like just dieting down. No, it's just, you know, those body parts need to improve. I mean, when you have water and stuff, we all look big and full. But when you have, you know, weaknesses and you start losing, I mean, a lot of guys have big legs in the off season, then they train for a show, they do a lot of cardio, it does beat the legs down. That's why, realistically, cardio and bodybuilding necessarily don't go together. But you have to do it. So I do step mill because I think that works your glutes and stuff better. I know when I started doing step mill over treadmill uh, or bike, I got better condition in my glutes and hamstrings. So, you know, lunges, all that stuff, doing those on extra days. We talk about doing extra body part stuff. Um, but then know, after the show, when you, when you gain weight, you look awesome at the weight that you look terrible at six no. weeks before. I know. Well, that's progression. You want to, you're going to gain like, muscle should, when you get ready for the show. Now. <laughs> I know. Every show you should progress, and that's one thing I always knew with my with my career is I always progress from show to show, and gain you gain muscle because you're so dedicated dieting for the show because you want to be at your best that actually it's better than being off season, you know. You said do extra lunges. Are you saying doing that for like legs because you're working no, on them? No, for your glutes, for your glutes and the condition, you know. Because you're doing extra stairs, yeah. so uh, you're losing them. You really want to, you know. I hate to talk about you know squeezing your glutes because. 15 years ago, I wouldn't give a shit about training glutes or anything, but these guys all now, we all have to do some sort of glute work because everyone has the strided, strided ass now, you know? It's very, very important on the stage. And, you know, not necessarily at this level, but I'm just trying to, I'm talking to you guys, like, be the best you can be, and we, you know, striations are going to be obviously something that they, they, you know, give you a better, give a better show place.